It's raining three-pointers over at White Bear Lake. We've got the highlights from when they took on Park of Cottage Grove, and you don't want to miss what they made happen from behind the arc. Then we take you over to see a last-second shot from the North Tartan Co-op hockey team. Does the goal count? You will see. And finally, White Bear Lake Wrestling had a dominant win over Roseville. Stay tuned as we take you down the sports path. That means it's a technical ball. Technical ball. Ball finds the hole up the middle. Steps up, goes deep, left side. Receiver open, count it. Touchdown, Titans! Takes a nice shot outside the goal box. And he will break the 0 0 tie. Fantastic shot by Kenloff Solen. Giller makes a move, a good one. Opportunity here, and the Bears score! The Bears strike first. He's at the 40. He's down to the 30. The 20. 10. 5. Touchdown, Jalen Bryant. Why not? What a beautiful run. Maureen there. Fights her off the puck. Opportunity here. Another sit. And a goal! Second chance effort for the Pioneers. Put the icing on the cake, if you will, Michael. Let's go down and got to the outside and said good evening and good night. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's our last show of 2016, and as you can see, we're feeling a bit festive around here and yes i am wearing a christmas tree on my head sam erickson john miller here and we've got a great show for you we got a lot of highlights as winter sports are starting to take off and head towards conference play we'll get you caught up with your fab five standings as well but first we're going to start off with a segment we started last show and that would be our social media montage yes yeah, sam me i know me and you are really excited about this new segment and even you and i have gotten the action we started our own tv19 twitter accounts you can find us at john tv19 and at sam tv19 respectively so if you have any cool stuff or anything else we should know about please send it our way and with that said we'll get things going with our social media montage the first thing we have here for our second edition of the social media montage we want to take you all to the way back to december 11th Minnesota Hockey Hub tweeted that their player of the week was Max Jenrick of the White Bear Lake Hot Boys hockey team. Max finished with five goals for the White Bear Lake Bears in a 10-1 victory over Forest Lake on November 29th. Max now has seven goals on the season and two assists for nine total points. He is averaging 1.29 points per game. Congrats, Max, on getting the Minnesota Hockey Hub Player of the Week honors. Yeah, congrats, Max. Moving on to December 18th in our next tweet when another Fab Five athlete got Player of the Week honors. This time it was from the Girls Basketball Hub. Matamidi Girls Basketball standout Emma Grouthaus put up 33 points against Maranatha Christian Academy in an 81-71 win on December 8th. Grouthaus averages 20.6 points per game, leading her team in that category. Matamidi has had a great start to the season, winning four of their first five games. Our next featured tweet comes from Tartan Athletic Director Brian Munter back on December 17th. He tweeted, Tartan wins it 4-3 in overtime over Matamidi and a goal by Brad Herzog. He's obviously talking about the boys hockey team there, as you can see in the photo. Tartan has played well in some key matchups thus far, including the 4-3 win over Matamidi. They also tied a very strong Hill Murray boys team 3-3 back on December 15th. Overall, in the boys' hockey scene, your Fat Five schools are representing very well. And got another tweet. This one coming from Matamidi star kicker slash punter Chase Sullivan. And he says, please take a second to vote and retweet. Honored to be nominated for the top kicker slash punter across the state of Minnesota. You heard him. Head over to NorthStarFootballNews.com and vote for Chase Sullivan. Voting ends December 22nd. Chase currently has about 88% of the vote, so let's keep him in the lead and vote today. And vote for the absolute boot. Our yeah. next tweet comes from White Bear Nation just yesterday. If you've been paying any attention at all to the Fab Five hockey picture, you may know of a little rival game going on. 
Tomorrow night at the Badness Sports Center, the Hill Murray Pioneers are traveling to play the Bears in a Metro East rivalry. Tickets went on sale yesterday at 4 p.m. Students were allowed to buy the tickets earlier in the day. If you are still looking for tickets, I would call over there as soon as possible because I would not be surprised if they are sold out by now. Now I'll take you to our final tweet for the evening. Comes from North Activities. Pleased to announce that Phil Walzak has been hired as the head boys lacrosse coach at North High School. Go Polars. The Polars were 0-10 last season, so hopefully Phil Walzak could turn the program around and get a few wins under their belt in his first year as head coach. Congrats to Phil, and I know about you, Sam, but I'm looking forward to the lacrosse season. That's all we've got for your second edition of the Social Media Montage. Yeah, great stuff. How about Chase Sullivan, man? You called it absolute boot. 88% of the vote think he's got that pretty much locked up. Top kicker in the state. All right, so that's the social media montage. Love that. Um, and now we're going to switch it over to hockey and get started right away with highlights. And this is girls hockey from when uh, North Tartan hosted Matamidi. And that was back on December 13th. We'll get things started after a scoreless first period. Megan Johnson gets a shot for Matamidi. Sneaks it past Olivia Schultz for the one to nothing Matamidi lead. But less than a minute later, North Tartan will tie it up. You see a scrum out in front of the net. Eventually, puck will trickle to Callie. Percy, she pokes it in. That one gets past the goalie, and we're tied up at one. But later in the second period, Mott gets on the power play. Jordan McAlpine sends a shot in from distance, but Juliana Selwood is there to get a quick rebound and put the Zephyrs back up on top, 2-1 to one with the power play goal. In the third period, Matamidi pushes farther into the lead with a goal from 26, Anna Broughton. Kelly Kruger with the assist from behind the net to make it 3-1 to one for Matamidi. But then later in the period, number five, Zoe Kulshaw Klein skates around some defenders, passes it low for Maddie Koklitz, who scores a quick shot, and North Tartan looks like they could come back, only down one goal. And then with an empty net, they pull their goalie with less than a minute to go. Ten seconds left. North Tartan looked like they might have a chance to tie it. Puck goes into the net. But it might be just a second too late. The refs are going to talk it over. As Lauren Henriksen thought she had the game winner, talking it over, but it looks like it was a little bit too late. Refs confer, think they get it right, as we'll take another look here. Tough break for North Tartan as this one came down to the wire. Great job by our camera crew. A lot of fun for us to be there catching the action. As you see, the puck does go across the net, but you see the time in the upper right corner. It had expired, so Matamidi wins the Thriller 3-2 to two and gets the conference victory. All right, so that was our first highlight of the night. We'll move on to our second highlight of the night. That one also featured North Tartan. This one, though, was at Aldrich Arena as the Hill Murray Pioneers hosted North Tartan in Metro East action as well. Game was pretty even at the beginning, and the first goal didn't come until 12-23 into the first period. As North Zoe Colshaw Klein gets the North Tartan program on the board with a one to nothing lead on the wraparound. But Hill Murray quickly turning door. around as rebound. tying it up just they over score. a minute later on a goal from Abby Bereen on the power play off the rebound, tying it up at one. 30 seconds later, Hill Murray pulls into the lead as Allie Clark gets a goal this time, kind of redirecting it into the net. And that makes it two to one going into the second period. And here comes a crazy goal as Maria Keppel fires it on towards net. Katie Kaufman kind of in front, bounces off of Kaufman oddly and goes into the net. Goal is credited to Kaufman, 3-1. There you see 4-1 as Helgeson gets an easy goal off the faceoff. That's why you want to win faceoffs in the zone, folks. And here's a nice individual effort to make it 5-1 as Nina Steigoff gets it in on the action. Her first goal on the night. And Morgan Helgeson gets another goal, this one from an assist from Barine. Helgeson's second goal of the night makes it 6-1 to one Pioneers. And then Nina Steigoff in the third. She gets her second, muscling past a couple defenders and somehow sneaking it past the goalie. Goal from Steigoff makes it 7-1 to one Pioneers. North Tartan finally gets back on the board. As pass from behind the net to Zoe Colshaw Klein. She gets both of the North Col Tartan goals on the night. It is 7-2 to Pioneers. Hill would add to their lead, though, as on a breakaway, Lindsay Featherstone gets the goal, making it 8-2. Looks like they're making any shot that they take. They get another one as it's 9-2 as Haley Blinkhorn tallies that one. That would be all the scoring, though, as Hill Murray wins it 9-2. Thought this one was going to be a little bit closer, but Hill Murray runs away with it. Colshaw Klein gets both for North Tartan. Hill Murray had seven goal scores. 
And after that first period, floodgates really opened. Hill Murray is scoring seven goals in periods two and three. And with that, we'll take a look at the Metro East girls standings. Yeah, what a great game by Hill Murray there. As you can see in the standings, they're currently uh, at 5-0 overall, or 5-0 in conference, 9-2 overall. Montemidi sits at 4-7-1 in conference, right in the middle of the pack. And the North Tartan co-op team currently sits at 1-3 uh, in conference. So we'll continue to monitor those Metro East girls standings as we get into the season. Yeah, now we'll switch it over to the Suburban East standings, where Mounds View is currently leading the conference with a conference record of 6-0-0 and 7-1-0 overall. Fab Five School White Bear Lake is holding their own in the very tough conference sitting just ahead of Creighton, who they beat earlier this season 3-2. They have a 5-2-0 overall record in conference, only trailing Mounds View. They're 5-2-0 overall. They're only trailing Mounds View in that conference. He's a 5-2-0 in conference, 8-4 overall. Uh, it should be a very tightly contested conference throughout the rest of the season. It will be interesting to see how it shakes up there at the top with White Bear Lake, Mounds View, and Creighton Durham Hall. Well, that just about wraps things up for girls hockey. Let's check out how the Fab Five boys hockey teams did. Starting with the Hill Murray Pioneers and the Mata Midai Zephyrs. We'll take you to Alder Arena out in Maplewood. We'll see how things get started. Story to start around the 10 minute mark of the first period. Pioneers get a great attempt at their end of the ice. The puck clanks off the pipe, but bringing it up the ice, Colin Hagstrom passes it, passes it over to Luke Posner, who puts it past Jake Bigley for the first goal of the night. Didn't think it would come from the Zephyrs, but congrats to them. They take their lead against uh, Hill Murray. Now we'll take you about to 8.37 left in the second. Troy Tischler has it behind the net for Hill Murray and passes it out in front for number 24, Joseph Quas. Beautiful pass. Quas goes far side on the goalie to tie it up at 1-1. One one. Now we'll take you into 13 minutes into the second period where Hill Murray gets a lead. A fight for the puck behind the net. The puck squirts out to number 18, Ken Boblitz, who centers it for Emmett Nath. Firing it on the net. Nath has a goal in every game this season, including the 3-3 tie that last week against Tartan. Now taking a 9-20 in the third period. Number 19, Brett Oberly gets called with the penalty. We looked at we thought he hit the puck first, but nonetheless, refs call it. Give number four, Colin Hagsworth, a penalty shot. So the Zephyrs have a chance to tie it up here. Hagstrom skating in, fakes left, and just runs out of time. Begley that had that one read by the goalie. Uh, the goalie read it the whole way. He is one of the top goaltenders in the state for Hill Murray. Great stop there. That saved the game. Things get a little chippy later in the third behind the net. Helmets even get knocked off in this scuffle. Matt Finelli and Ben Helgeson get coincidental minors for roughing. The Zephyrs pull their goalie with 102 left in the game. Almost the whole time the Zephyrs had an empty net. The Pioneers would send it right back to their zone. Number 27, Emmett Nass shoots the puck just a few inches wide of the goal. No empty net in this one, but it wouldn't matter as Hill Murray pulls away with the win. 2-1, to one. Hill Murray undefeated after this game wraps up and still undefeated at this point in the season. Yeah, and after that win, Hill Murray, you take a look at these Metro East standings and see how they're shaping up, sitting in second place only because they have played the most conference games out of any team. We have Modern Media I, who are 3-2-0 in conference, 3-3-0 overall. Hill Murray is 2-0-1 in conference and 5-0-1 on the year. And I expect that once they play enough conference games, they will be competing for that top spot. Currently 12th ranked overall, the Pioneers are starting off the season well behind Brock Bramer and his seven goals on the year. Tartan has started the year off playing good hockey as well with a 6-2-1 record. Overall, and a 2-1-1 record in conference, North St. Paul is the lowest Fab Five team in the suburban, or excuse me, Metro East, but is currently sitting at 6-3-0 overall and 2-2-0 in conference. This has potential to be the best start to a North St. Paul boys hockey season in a decade, and as you can tell, folks, this is a very good conference overall, and our Fab Five teams are starting off the season doing great. Should be fun to watch the rest of the way. Well, that's how things are going in the Metro East. will lead us to our next highlight, our lone school outside the Metro East, White Bear, who took on Roseville back on the 10th. And we've got highlights courtesy of CTV. We'll get into that. White Bear leaving the locker room. Got to like those White Bear jerseys. Get the scoring started. 7-19 in the first period. A little give and go as Chase Hempstead gives it to Cade Varney. Varney gives it back to Hempstead for the goal. White Bear up 1-0 in the first period. Now even strength this time, 11.44 into the first. Bailey Thielen skates up the sideboard, centers it over to Joe Kroll, who banks it in off the goalie. White Bear up 2-0, still in the first. Now we skip ahead to the third period, where Roseville commits a holding penalty on a breakaway. 
You see the penalty there. And a few moments later, Matthew Leahy with a roughing penalty for the Raiders in the corner. That'll make it a five on three power play for White Bear. But Roseville wins the faceoff in their own end. A nice pass to Thomas Rossini. Gets a one on one breakaway for Roseville, and Rossini scores. That's a th five on three shorthanded goal for Roseville. I bet the Bears are going to want that one back. But later on in the third, however, there is a goal that Roseville might want back as Chase Hempstead gets a pass and skates in slowly, fires a shot on net, hits the defense, and the puck takes a nasty bounce over the glove of Marshall Murphy. Not sure Murphy could do a whole lot with that one. Let's take another look again in slow motion. You see the shot deflects up and over into the goal. That's definitely a goal Roseville didn't want to happen. Wiper up now 3-1. to one. Roseville will pull their goalie late. Chase, Chase Hampstead makes it a hat trick with his third goal on the night, an empty netter, and sealing the deal for White Bear. They win it 4 to 1. Bailey Thielen added two assists on the night, and goaltender Bob Parento has 14 saves for the Bears. Parento having a great season so far. He's got two shutouts on the season and has allowed two or less goals against in all but one of his games. So you see it, White Bear. Getting the win in conference, and now we'll take a look at those Suburban East standings. Yeah, great game by White Bear Lake. Let's see where they stand in the Suburban East Conference at 4-1-0 and and in conference and 6-1-0 and and overall. The Bears sit right behind the undefeated Stillwater Ponies, who are 6-0 and in conference and 7-0 and on the year. The Bears' only loss came against a very good Cretan team and only lost 3-2 on the 17th. White Bear will have a shot to take over the Suburban East as they play the Ponies twice, this, uh, twice later on this season. Although Stillwater is ranked one of the top five teams in the state, so I suspect those will be some tough matchups. So that does it for boys hockey, but it will be fun to watch all of our Fab Five teams as the season progresses. Yeah, well, that's about it for hockey in general here on Sports Path tonight. We are going to talk hoops and see who's contributing on the court for your Fab Five when we return. Dancing to me, I think it's the truest form of expression. I was a dancer since I was four years old. I was tripping and I was falling and I didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. With the 360 camera, it gives the chance for someone to see what I see, experience what I experience. Have a surprise. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Here we go. Oh my god. I dream sometimes and I see that. I like the way your arms hand. <laughs> Welcome back to Sports Path. John Frost and Sam McClaws here in studio, ready to talk some basketball. Basketball season has been a good time for your Fab Five in recent years, and this year is no different. We'll take a look at some early season standings. Yes, John, conference play has yet to start, but we will look at some overall records. Montemita currently is now 4-1 after losing at Woodbury last night. The Zephyrs are led by junior Emma Grouthouse, who we may feature a little bit more later on in the episode. North and Hill Murray are hovering around the 500 mark in non-conference play, and a little surprising is Tartan at 1-4, but the Titans have been playing some pretty difficult competition early on. The majority of conference play is still a couple weeks away for the Metro East, but the Suburban East got some of the conference play started early this year 
and we were there to kick things off when White Bear hosted Park of Cottage Grove. Yeah, let's John, take you got those highlights? Sorry, John. Yeah, let's take you to the White Bear Lake South Campus where it'll be raining threes there. First one goes in from Alex Moline. She drains it nothing but net from distance. Gives White Bear Lake a 9-3 lead over Park. And then Stephanie or Ella Janicki drives inside. She'll finger roll it in. Gives Park or White Bear Lake an 11-3 lead. This time we'll see it once again to Janicki. She would hit the three giving White Bear Lake a 14-3 lead over Cottage Grove. And then we'll see Michaela Craig in here this time. Nothing but net again. They were on fire to start the first half. And then a pass from Audrey Perrin gets it to number four, 24, Stephanie ja or Sophie Janicki. This one is good for three as well. Now the score is 20-5. to five. You think it's over there? Courtney Crouch will hit it from outside. Unfortunately, this one was just a two-pointer score, 22-5. to five. White Bear Lake starting hot over Park in the first half. Park would call a time out to stop the bleeding there and that will take you to halftime as White Bear Lake would be leading the Park Wolfpack 36 to 23. Park would make a little bit of a comeback fortunately they're able to stop the bleeding from a three from Alexa Moline that's just what they needed to give them a 43 to 39 lead as Park had a ferocious comeback to start the second half and then addition a drive to Sophie Janicki gets the Bears right back and rolling 45 to 39 a four White Bear Lake and the final score would end up being 62 to 47. Park hang on, hanged hang in there and had a nice little comeback. Now we'll take a look at the Suburban East standings. Yeah, so White Bear taking care of business in the early season conference showdown. And as we can see, White Bear is now 5-2, and 2-0 two, two and oh in the Suburban East after squeaking by Stillwater last Tuesday, 48 45. White Bear plays Centennial tomorrow, then returns to conference action on January 4th after, at Woodbury after the winter break. So that will pretty much do it for the girls. Time to see what is going on with the Fab Five boys, boys basketball team, starting with uh, that Metro East, John. Yeah, let's take a look at the standings there. No conference games have been played yet, but Matamidi has started off 5-0 uh, and overall behind a uh, great play of Jordan Fox, or Parker Fox, and Jordan uh, Jalen Fryer. Now we'll see Tartan is sitting there, Jordan Horn and Jordan Thompson. Jordan Horn is committed to playing Albany, New York after a great play at Siena. They are currently starting off slow, but going three and two, I've got some outstanding play from junior guard. Uh, good news, Capogo has stepped up after a slew of seniors left North last year and is averaging 23.5 points per game. Hill Murray is having a very rough start to the year with a one and five record despite some terrific play from senior guard. Simeon Davis, who is averaging 22 points per game. The Montemite Zephyrs are being led by our last sports path in studio guests, Parker Fox and Shane Frost. We led the Zephyrs to an undefeated record of 5-0 and and are ranked 8th by the Star Tribune Basketball Hub. They dominated Stillwater last night, 88-65. Could be not more excited to broadcast some of these Metro East games between the Fab Five schools with so many good players and teams. Now let's take a look at those Suburban East standings. Yeah, Suburban East uh, pretty early on in the season as well. Only one game has been played. You see Roseville got past Stillwater. White Bear, however, is 0-4 on the season and the Bears are going to need to get something going quickly in order to salvage their season. But the Bears have a tough one as they travel to Matamidi tomorrow to face off against Parker Fox and the Zephyrs. Well, that about does it for basketball. Things should really get exciting after the short winter break when conference play gets going. TV19 will be out catching some of the best action, so don't forget to tune in and follow us on social media to find out when and where. Well, we'll take a short break, but when we come back, we'll talk wrestling and show you those highlights from White Bear Lake hosted Roseville. You're going to need me. You're going to need us. All of us. You're going to need our technical skills, our math, our engineering skills. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food, you're going to need our organizational skills, our problem-solving skills. You're going to need our determination, our honesty, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us.
Well, welcome back inside the festive holiday studios here at Sports Bath. We're here for our final segment. We're going to talk a little bit of wrestling, and we'll get right into it, going straight to the highlights from when White Bear Lake hosted Roseville. And we were there. You see it is at North Campus of White Bear Lake, where they like to dim the lights and make a big show of the match. They get the spotlight out. You see it there. We were joined by a very special guest, Tim Herman, the athletic director at White Bear Lake. Well, White Bear would get on the board early as Charlie Yang gets a couple of uh, points for a takedown early. Eventually, he'll get the pin and get the 6-0 lead for White Bear Lake. Now we'll skip a little farther ahead. It's this clip here, Baker versus the Roseville wrestler. We'll go back in time. Now we got Jarrell Turner. This is what I'm trying to get to. Jarrell Turner wrestling in the orange and black for White Bear at 126 pounds, team leading 10 to six. Eventually, Turner gets the pin to make it 16 to six. You see the motion from the referee right there. So 16 to six because of the six points for the pin. Now in the final seconds of the 145 pound weight class, White Bear wrestler Matt Mudikin gets a couple more points at the end by uh, running the wrestler out of bounds, clinching the technical, technical fall for his team, adding five points to the scoreboard. Mudiking is one of the more experienced wrestlers for White Bear. And because of that, White Bear will take the lead uh, 30 to six. Now White Bear loses the next couple weight classes. And at the 182 white class, rebound with Josh Sudebeck, who will eventually get the pin after he flips over the opponent. He gets a pinfall there, six points, and I'll make it 36-18 to White Bear Lake. The next weight class is at 195 pounds. Brandon Kreckelberg gets Zeb Koth of Roseville in a headlock and takes him down. Eventually gets him in the cradle, gets the pinfall, and gets six points. White Bear Lake now leads it 42-18. to And with that, we'll take a look as Kreckelberg and Koth shake things up. And now we'll take a look at the scoring summary of the rest of the meet going through the weight classes. And you see White Bear Lake dominating kind of the lower weight classes, getting a few falls and major decisions. And we'll move on to the next weight classes here as the heavier guys. Roseville came back a little bit, but White Bear was able to do enough as they got the win from Sudebeck and Kruckelberg. And they got the team win 42 to 18 to start off Suburban East Conference play 1 and 0. So nice job there by White Bear Lake Wrestling Program. And I think now, John, we're going to shift and highlight a couple of players that you've picked out this week for Players of the Week. Yeah, it's that time again for our Players of the Week. Lots of players were more than deserving of the male and female athletes of the week. And unfortunately, I can only go with one male and one female. So without further ado, for the male athlete of the week, I have to go with our last studio guest, Matamidi Boys Basketball Senior Forward, number 23, Parker Fox. Fox has been lights out to start the season, had a season high of 41 points in a 75 to 61 win over Monticello December 9th and is averaging 32 points per game, leading the Zephyrs to an undefeated start. Our female player of the week is Matamidi Girls Basketball number 35, Emma Grothaus. She had 33 points in an 81-71 win over Maranatha Christian. And December 13th, she had 22 points over North Branch in a 67-25 uh, blowout. So congratulations to you two Matamidi players, as you guys have been absolutely destroying it this year. And good luck to you the rest of the way. Yeah, I feel like those are a couple athletes that we might be seeing uh, in the postseason and then, um, you know, highlighting a little bit more here on Sports Path in the coming weeks uh, as the basketball season gets growing. All right, well, that's just about it here at Sports Path. But we want to tell you about a few upcoming broadcasts that we're going to do here in the coming weeks after we take a short uh, holiday break, as most of the schools do. We've got uh, some hoops coming up for you. We're going to feature that Modern Eye Boys basketball team on January the 3rd. On uh, January the 5th, we got wrestling of Montemidi and Tartan. And on the 6th and 7th, we're going to do hockey. As on the 6th, we have girls Montemidi versus Hill Murray. On the 7th, we have the boys Montemidi versus Hill Murray. Should be great stuff. Our next episode of Sports Path, we also want to remind you, is going to be in three weeks as we take a break as well. January 11th, 2016, we'll resume. Do it every other week after that. So. Catch back up with us on January the 11th. For everyone here at Sports Path, we want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next year. Mariah Keppel sends one far side, bounced off the player.